Hi everyone, this is Harrison with the Luxury Pergola. Uh, we want to cover troubleshooting today, specifically of the electric box. While typically there are not very many issues that come up when we send out our unit, these things do happen sometimes, and typically it's something very, very minor. So we want to go through exactly what you should be seeing on the inside of the box, uh, what to expect. Now we don't suggest you tamper with the box or mess with the box if you don't have to. If everything works right out of the box, leave it. Uh, if you do have an issue, then obviously you can use this video as a reference to make sure everything looks correct, uh, to make sure that everything is functioning correctly before you have to call us and waste your time. So we're going to look inside the box and make sure you can see everything in there, know why we have everything set up the way that we do, and kind of walk you through it. So your standard box ships like this. You've got your box itself right here. This is a waterproof enclosure. And then you've got your 110 volt line here with a standard outlet plug. This plugs in, like I say, to a just standard outlet. You got nine feet of line here on this guy. This is a weatherproof uh, cord right here. So you're fine leaving it outside, obviously. And then here you've got your landscape cable. This is your low voltage line. This powers your motor. If you watch the install video, you know this feeds up to your motor and you know that you tie this together inside that terminal in that waterproof box that's in the gutter. Uh, if you have any questions on that, see the install video. It'll go over that. As long as you put that together correctly, which most of you probably are, then don't worry about it. I don't think we've had anyone that's had trouble with the terminal on this end. It's more of issues within the box itself. So as we look inside the box and open it up, what you're gonna find is there's a lot of different things inside here. So first off, you've got your remote, and this is always gonna be inside this box. So you already have to open the box when you receive the item uh, just to get the remote. Uh, so you can take that remote already off and then you've got the rest of the box. Now these lines right here, uh, this green, black, and yellow line, this is actually the antenna. So if you wanna make sure that you can receive the signal on your receiver, do not cut these lines. We have had issues in the past where the wires are actually touching one another, the bare wires are touching one another, and so it gives you feedback frequency issues and so that you don't actually get it to work every time correctly. So if you notice there's extra wire coming out of these and you wanna clip them just, you know, about a 16th shorter, just so you have the insulation of the wire going all the way up to the end, you can go ahead and do that. This right here, this is a transformer. So what this does is it takes the power line in from this side, apologies for the sound, that's the saw running in the backside, uh, but it takes the power line in here. You've got three terminals where it ends here. Uh, one is an L that stands for line. That's gonna be your basically your power line. So that's the black line. So if anything comes loose or a wire comes out, you know which way it's set up. Line is L, uh, that's the black. N is neutral, that is the white line. And the symbol there is actually the ground symbol. Uh, that is for the green line, which is your ground line. So each of those should be already tied down. Again, if it slips out, apologies, but you can obviously put those back on and you're perfectly fine. Obviously make sure the wires aren't touching one another if you do tamper with that. But this usually, because of how we have it screwed down, we don't have any issues with. Same on the leads out. So if you look at this transformer, this is a 24 volt transformer. It steps the power down of the voltage. You can think of voltage as blood pressure. Essentially, it's running through the wires. So at 110 volts, you've got high blood pressure. At 24 volts, you've got a lot lower blood pressure. So the pressure that comes out of this, it translates this 110 volt line down to 24 volts and feeds that out this way, which is why you could touch these lines while I don't suggest it, and you never should, you could touch these 24 volt lines and it won't actually shock you nearly as badly as 110 volt lines. So this produces 24 volts at four amps. So this pushes four amps at a maximum. Now our motor typically pulls at the top end about three amps. So this only runs one motor. If you have the question of whether or not you can run multiple motors on here, the answer is no. This transformer only runs one motor at a time. So inside here, you've got two little outlets that each have two terminals each. So what I mean by that, one terminal says V negative, it has two terminals. So one group is V negative, two terminals. The other group, V positive, has two terminals, which are, the terminal is where you screw the screw down. So each of those should have one coming out of it, V positive and V negative. Those are the voltage negative and voltage positive coming out of the transformer and should go to power the receiver. So basically power from your outlet runs to the transformer, it steps the power down to 24 volts. That 24 volts runs to this receiver. The receiver is then basically in charge of when it feeds power and when it doesn't feed power. It feeds power when you click on the remote, when you let go of the remote, it stops feeding power. So that's essentially how this whole thing works. 
Inside here on the receiver, you'll see that these obviously translate correctly. This is where we typically have a potential problem. If these are shipped, there's a whole lot of vibration, especially if we're sending it all the way to the West Coast from Indianapolis, this can come loose. So if you pull on this and this terminal comes loose, you're gonna find that, oh, I've got a wire here or even two of them come loose. Hey, I've got two terminals here. I don't know where these go. Where do I stab them in? Which goes which? How do I set this up? That is the most common question we get when it comes to this box. Usually that's the only issue that we have. You want the leads that are going to the motor, these leads that go all the way out of the box and into the spool, these two leads should be an M1 and M2. M1 stands for motor one, M2 stands for motor two. Are they two different motors? No. Why are they labeled that way? I have no idea. Maybe sequentially, just so you know it's the motor and there are two different lines, line one and line two, but either way, they both feed one motor. Now on the second line here, you've got 24 volt negative and 24 volt positive. That's what these stand for. The negative 24 V and positive or plus 24 V are the positive and negative lines. Those need to match the V's coming out of your transformer. So negative V or V negative should go to negative 24 V. Positive V or V positive should go to plus 24 V. That's it. So if you have a terminal issue where one of them came off, make sure each of those is coordinated correctly and all that's good to go, you're happy. Now, the other question that we typically get when it comes to this box is, hey, I set everything up, I ran my motor. When I press the up button, it actually closes the louvers. When I press the down button, it opens the louvers. I would like that to be swapped. Now, in the install video, we talked about how you can swap the terminals or the leads inside that waterproof box that you put up in that gutter. Your other option is to swap your M1 and your M2. So M2, you can move to M1, M1, you can move to M2. That does the exact same thing. It allows you to reverse the polarity to make sure that when you press down, it closes the louvers and up opens the louvers. We do also get a question here about the hole that's in the middle. Uh, so that hole that's in the middle between these two grommets is just a drain hole. It's in there because Humidity, especially here in Indiana, has not been our friend in the past. And so we've learned these waterproof boxes are so good at keeping moisture in. And because the transformer heats up, you get condensation just because of the different air temperatures inside the box. That coupled with humidity that can still get in the box causes water to build up and then you end up having issues inside. So you wanna make sure that any of the condensation or humidity that condensates inside the box can always find its way back outside the box and it allows a little bit of air exchange to make sure that you don't have the transformer getting too hot inside of the box itself. So when you mount this to a wall or place it somewhere, make sure that that hole isn't facing up because it's not a very good drain if it's facing up. So make sure that that hole is facing down. Now, the last thing that I will show you has to do with actually programming it. If you get this, everything's correct. All the leads are in the right spot. You don't see any issues whatsoever, but your remote just is not telling the receiver to do anything. We have a couple quick checks to make sure you're looking at everything correctly and make sure that it's all processed correctly. So as we look at this box, you're gonna see that they've got, essentially while it's plugged in, you've got two main lights you need to pay attention to. The first is the transformer light. As soon as you plug it in, that transformer light should illuminate green. If it doesn't illuminate green, you've got a problem. And not necessarily always with the box. A lot of times people have a GFI that's turned off or the breakers turned off. So double check all the GFIs in the house and make sure that all the breakers are flipped on. If all the breakers are on, all the GFIs are on, and you use a voltage tester on the outlet to know that it's feeding power and this transformer still isn't giving you a green light, you need to give us a call. At that point, you're probably looking at a new transformer. Again, haven't ever had that issue before, but that would be it in theory. Next step is gonna be look at the receiver. Now the receiver by its own will not show you any colored red light or green light, but there is a red light next to this program button. You can see right here where it says program with an arrow facing up. That button right there is the program button. The light next to it illuminates red whenever you're holding down the remote. So when you click on the remote, that should illuminate red. When you let go of the remote, it should stop illuminating. Now, that red light is typically what will happen. If you look at this and you try to operate it and you click on the remote and nothing happens at all, typically what it means is you just haven't paired the remote to the receiver or for whatever reason, it stopped getting paired. So the fix to that is just to pair it. And it's super, super simple with these receivers. All you have to do is plug it into an outlet. It'll light everything up. 
Next step is to press the program button. You'll notice that the red LED next to it turns red. While it's red, it'll give you about a three second window. While it's red, click the button on the remote. So click one of the buttons on the remote and let go. You don't have to hold the button. You don't have to press two buttons. You just have to press one button once and let go. You'll see that the red LED will respond to the remote. It'll flash briefly before it returns to fully illuminated. After that, you're then going to stop touching everything. The red light will stay illuminated for a period of about five seconds, and then it will flash itself off. Once it's turned off, then you click the remote, make sure that everything is paired correctly, and you should be good to go. If you follow that pairing steps, you know, a couple times and it didn't pair, then give us a call. Also, you may either have a dead battery in the remote or you may have a receiver issue. Some of that stuff can happen, although very, very rare, it can happen as well. So again, to program it, press the program button, it'll illuminate, press the button on the remote within the three seconds, it'll flash to respond to the remote, just press it so you don't hold it, let go. It will stay illuminated. It will then turn off after a period of about five seconds, and then you should be good to go. Over time, you will find that the battery in the remote will die. Typically, if you start having connectivity issues, meaning when you press the remote, it moves a little, stops moving, you know, it's really intermittent and you're close to the box and you're pointing at the box, uh, then typically you should change the battery in the remote. It's a small little cell battery. You can find the letters that are on there and just swap that out and typically you'll be fine after that. Obviously, any other questions or troubleshooting issues beyond what we've covered here, give us a call. We'll be happy to help. So that's pretty much it on the electrical box. Uh, hopefully, if you had any issues, this solved all that. You didn't have to call us and you got to keep working on your pergola. And we hope you enjoy it. This has been Harrison with the Luxury Pergola. See ya.